Uh, we are coming back here next month, I believe it's the first weekend of next month, to do a conference entitled Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. Now this is going to be a fun conference and it's open to everybody. It's just not for people who are messed up. If you know, we don't need to go. We're not. Look, the people who are really messed up won't come. That's the problem. We need the rest of y'all to show up. But uh, uh, come and uh, share this time with us. We're going to have a lot of fun. And you guys will like this. This is a man-friendly conference. <laughs> this is not one of these conferences that beats up on men for not being women. <laughs> What's up with that anyway? And you women egg this on. All you got to do is ask most women to describe their ideal man. Listen to them. They will describe another woman. But what if God made us this way on purpose? Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, boys, give me a hoo -ah. hoo That's a man's amen right there. <laughs> we are not sick, disgusted, twisted perverts. We're just men. <laughs> God made us this way on purpose, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So uh, uh, it's also open to singles of any and every age. This is not a classic marriage conference. That's why it will be fun. Uh, it's, uh, this isn't one of these conferences where we all sit and hold hands and cow eye each other. So single people will feel totally, perfectly comfortable here uh, in, the, in the event. Uh, there will be no workbooks handed out. You won't have to take any notes. There will be no emotional breakout sessions. <laughs> I call this the perfect seminar for men because you don't have to do anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a man's conference right there. <laughs> so it's going to be fun, so you want to check it out. All right, this morning, reading from uh, Romans, the 12th chapter. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the Roman Christians, 12th chapter, verse 2. He writes this. He says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. And make no mistake, the world is desperately trying to squeeze you into its pattern. People don't care. The world doesn't care if you believe in Jesus. They don't care if you go to church. What bugs them is when you don't act and think like them. That's what irritates them. And the thing that really separ separates us is, in fact, the way we act and think. Now, the world is desperately trying to squeeze you into acting and thinking like they think. And when you don't, it's very odd to them. So instead of being into this pattern, Paul says, be transformed. Well, how do you do that? Well, he tells us, you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to change the way you think. The reason we struggle in marriages so much in the Christian community is because we suffer from what I call stinking thinking. And we've got to think more biblically instead of the crazy thinking that we've been thinking. Now, as I travel all over the world speaking about relationships, uh, I love doing this, but today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to talk to singles. How many single people do we have here today? <laughs> All right. Good, good. Now, first thing I want you to know, it's okay to be single. You do not have a disease. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you. Oftentimes, singles feel uncomfortable in the Christian community because it's like we say, it's great to be married, too bad if you're single. When the Bible actually teaches, it's great to be single, too bad if you're married. <laughs> So it's okay to be single. And the reason I feel so motivated to talk to singles is we've got to stop the crazy before they get into this stuff. I've gotten so many emails over the last year from people all over the world who write me and say, Pastor Mark, we've been married for 12 months and we're in hell. <laughs> Pastor Mark, we've been married for six months and we're in hell. Two months and we're in hell. I think, seriously, it should take you a long time to get to hell. <laughs> I you getting to hell so fast? <laughs> That's if you do everything wrong. Man, when you get married and you are in hell in a matter of months, and I'm telling you, this is repeated over and over and over and over again among Christian people. That's when it starts to doubt. Man, we are not preparing these people. We're not doing this right. Now, a lot of people don't like talking about these issues. A lot of pastors don't like talking about relationship issues because... So many people have failed at it, and they don't want people to feel bad. 
Well, this isn't about making people feel bad. I get it. Lots of us in this room have messed up it one way or another and along these lines. But we still need to tell the truth so we can help people to avoid crazy. Okay? It's, it's as if people think, well, you know, I, we can't talk about the truth because we believe in grace. Look, we believe in grace, but it doesn't erase the truth. They are not contrary to each other. The Bible says Jesus was full of grace and truth. Just because we believe in grace doesn't mean truth doesn't exist. Because we believe in truth doesn't mean we don't have hearts for people who've messed up. For example, should you kill people? No. Will God forgive you if you kill someone? Yes. Well, then I can kill people. No! <laughs> We've got to stop the crazy. Grace does not give you a license to keep doing life crazy. Now, assuming you are single and would like to consider marriage... How do you find the right person to spend the rest of your life with? Well, you have to use your brain. <laughs> the Bible says to use wisdom. We are to crave wisdom. We are to seek and study after wisdom. The Bible says only a fool, the scripture says, despises wisdom. But I fear that we have become very foolish in the Christian community today because... We despise wisdom. We don't want wisdom. We want divine revelation. We don't want to study the scriptures to learn how to live life. We want Jesus to tell us what to do. We want God to tell us what we're so spiritual. It sounds so spiritual. But it's not spiritual. It's carnal. Just because we talk spiritual, a lot of it is just so that we don't have to really study the Bible. Get serious about life. If God just tells us what to do, then we don't have to plan it out. And if anybody over spiritual, if there's any group of people that over spiritualizes things, it is, God bless your pea picking hearts, it's single people. And all you got to do is get any group of single Christians anywhere in America, gathered together, I don't care what denomination, and listen to them talk. And you'll hear stuff like this Well, I'm just waiting for the Lord to bring me a husband. I'm just waiting for the Lord to bring me a wife. What, what are you, Moses? <laughs> I'm just waiting for God to tell me. And the Christian leaders get up and these nitwits keep the same crazy going. And that's when they email me in six months, I'm in hell, I'm in hell, I'm in hell. You got to use your brain. We need to use wisdom. Now, when you are dating someone, it's not about divine revelation. It's about discovering character. You're supposed to look and see what that person is like. You want to find someone to spend the rest of your life with. You want someone of character. Don't get all caught up in how cute they are. <laughs> character will last a lifetime. Sexy has a shelf life. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and some of us have hit our expiration dates. I got to tell you right now. It's, it's over for us. I got to tell you. When you're dating them, keep your head clear, your eyes open. Look at how they act. But more importantly, look at how they react. Because anybody can act. It's why they call it acting. <laughs> Reacting, that's hard to fake. When the pressure really builds and things are going hard, and how, how do they react then? If you're dating some guy and he gets all mad and crazy and psycho, <laughs> get away from him. You're dating some girl, she's all whiny and needy. Dump her butt and move on. <laughs> but you know what they say to me? Say, oh, pastor, that's not normally how they act. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Listen, if you don't remember anything from this morning, you single people, remember this. You date the act, you will marry the react. Let me say it to the side. You will date the act. You will marry the react. Man, you see people acting all, reacting all crazy and nasty. Get away from them. Move on. And when you're dating them, keep your eyes open, head clear. Everything is fair game. Everything. You find out something about their life you're not comfortable with, move on. It's not about finding the perfect person with stuff that really sticks out that's weird and crazy. Man, just... And everything's fair game. Even the family. Good Lord, if you can't stand the family, move on. You go over and it's the Adams family. Get out of there. 
I have had it up to here with married couples who whine incessantly about the family. If you're here doing this today, shut up. <laughs> All right? Enough already. I can't stand his father. I can't stand the mother. I can't get it. You couldn't tell us before you married into crazy. Once you say I do, it's over. Be quiet. Now, if you're comfortable marrying into crazy, then fine. My wife was. <laughs> but she doesn't whine about it. I hate the family. I hate the family. Look at their relationship and commitment to God. How strong is their commitment to God? Some of you girls, for heaven's sake, you're so quick. Oh, he believes in Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. We're getting married. He believes in Jesus now. Ha, ha. You just got out of jail as an axe murderer, but he believes in Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. You might want to see if that took yet. Come on, people, the devil believes in Jesus. How's that working out for him? He believes in Jesus. Come on. Do they really live it? That's what you're trying to figure out. Do they go to church regularly, whether you come with them or not? Do they pray? Do they read their Bible? The ultimate test, do they give money? without whining and complaining do they freely give or is it like giving birth <laughs> like they need Lamaze classes before the offering goes by <laughs> as for divine revelation what about divine revelation listen to me when it talk, the Bible talks about marriages, it uses marriage, it uses the word find. Everybody say find. find. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. A woman of noble character who can find. That's what the Bible talks. There's not just this revelation stuff. Finding and being found. That's what it's about. This implies, of course, looking. <laughs> looking. Hello? Where, where is, where is he? I gotta find him. You gotta look. Listen to Crystal Singles whining about dating. I want to get married, but I don't want to date. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> you don't want to date? Well, it's such a hassle. Well, then stay single. You're gonna find something. You have to look for it. Some of us are lazy. We don't want to look for things. We want it handed to us, given to us automatically. You think that's what God's going to do for you? You need to look. Some of us find very quickly. Others, it's Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> you know, you really got to dig. Okay? And some lady emailed me a couple of weeks ago, for heaven's sakes. She says, Pastor, you talk about finding? She says, I live where there are no Christian men. There are no Christian men where I live. What should I do? Move! <laughs> Is that that complicated? Just move! Wow, people are crazy. Well, I, w I want my soulmate. <laughs> so listen to me. The idea of a soulmate comes from Greek mythology. It is not a Christian concept. And we should know better. And we take this broken pagan concept that's in our culture today and we spiritualize it. Because God has created one special person just for you. You telling your kids this, shame on you. Seriously, if that is not the epitome of self-centered narcissistic thinking, I do not know what is. God did not create another human being just for you. And the moon doesn't really follow you when you drive at night either. <laughs> Shocking everybody this morning with all kinds of revelations. Listen to me. If there was one perfect person who could meet all the needs of your heart and soul, trust me when I say that God would use all of his divine power 
to keep that person as far away from you as possible. <laughs> Why? God is supposed to meet all the needs of our heart and soul. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You think God's going to be thrilled with you making a god out of some guy or girl in your life? Stop that. Meet all the needs of your heart and soul. Seriously. And you girls. <laughs> Do you really think some boy is going to meet all the emotional needs of your heart and soul. Yes, Pastor, I do. <laughs> Stop the drugs, for heaven's sakes! No wonder some of y'all so miserable. You get married and stick a straw in his brain and try to suck out all his life. <laughs> He's going, oh! There is not a man on earth designed to meet all the emotional needs of a woman. So well, what do I do? Get a life. Get some friends. Talk to people. Get involved in the church. Volunteer. Try to get it off from some guy. Yeah, well, I'm just waiting for God to tell me who to marry. Okay. I'm not saying God can't. God can do anything. What I will say to you is there's no biblical example of that ever happening. Ever. There is no place in the Bible, the book we say we believe in and pattern our lives after, where God ever told anybody to marry anyone. The closest you can get is when an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him to take Mary as his wife, but he'd already picked her. He was just freaked out because she was pregnant. Nobody was buying the angel told me story. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, an angel. So an angel had to show up to him and say, snap out of it, boy. Marry the girl. The next closest you can find is when God told Hosea the prophet to marry a prostitute. But even then, he didn't tell him which prostitute. He just said, go pick one. <laughs> pick a hoe, any hoe. That's what he said. Ho, ho, ho. That wasn't a Christmas thing. That was three hookers on a corner. Ho, ho, ho. Pick a ho. Well, Pastor, what about, what about Eve? What about when God brought Eve? To, oh, okay, okay. But come on. It was the only people on earth. Hardly applies here. Besides, if you're walking around naked in a garden, you've got issues. <laughs> well, I disagree. I want a marriage. I want a, I want a divine appointment like Ruth and Boaz. <laughs> Have you read Ruth and Boaz? You know, people don't read the Bible today. They don't. They read about the Bible. They hear nitwits like me talk about the Bible. But they don't actually read it. For, read it? For yourself. Don't you dare quote anything. You haven't actually read it for yourself, Ruth and Boaz. Have you read Ruth and Boaz? The whole thing was rigged by the mother-in-law. <laughs> right? Naomi set the whole thing up. She said, okay, here comes Boaz. Go, okay, stand over here. He'll see you. I didn't see you. What an idiot. Let's try it again. Let's go over here. Let's try that. And get, and get his attention here. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, now this time. Now, okay, I hear he's going to be at this party. And he's going to lay down and take, to take a nap. And when he takes a nap, you lay down at his feet. So you get all dialed up and smell pretty, it says. You know, she's supposed to be just decked out to the nines. The mother-in-law is doing all this. And then when he wakes up, he will find you. <laughs> and that's what happened. Boaz is just chilling out. You know, he's sleeping. <laughs> and then he wakes up and goes, what are you doing here? <laughs> I don't know. must be the Lord. Praise God. I don't know. <laughs> See, Boaz thought he found Ruth. Ruth made sure she was found. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right, girls, got to get out there, get found. Why does not the Bible ever talk about soulmates and all this other nonsense? 
Because the writers of the Bible knew that the principles of Christianity, the principles we say we believe in, these principles are so life-changing, and they are. They are so powerful. They've been changing lives for thousands of years, for eternity. These principles are so powerful that you could take any two people in the world, put them together, and they could have a successful marriage if they live by the principles. That's what it's about. It's not about you, cute though you may be. It's about the principles. That's why you're supposed to find, you're supposed to live by the principles and find someone else who does. It's about the principles. It's not about some magic. Here's an important point. Marriage was never designed to make you happy. And all the married people said, amen, yes, praise God. <laughs> designed to make you happy? You're supposed to be happy in the first place. Listen to me, if you are a lonely, empty, miserable soul, for the love of heaven, stay single. <laughs> because a lonely, empty, miserable soul that marries another lonely, empty, miserable soul just makes a marriage of two lonely, empty, miserable souls. It does not a marriage make. Besides, we're supposed to be people of faith. We're singing all these great songs celebrating the life of God in us, and you're not happy? We're supposed to already be happy. I was looking at a university study. Universities study the stupidest things on earth. And this one university decided they wanted to study the effect of smiles. So what they got the money to study this. I don't know who gives them money for this stupid stuff. But they went and took old yearbooks and they rated people's smiles. And then they would take the people with the 10% best smiles. They got them all in a group. It's not what our criteria they used. And the 10% best smiles in each year group, yearbook. And they went and interviewed these people later in life. What was stunning is how successful these people were in life. And as a passing note, but it caught my attention. They had one sentence in there that said this. Now think of this. This isn't just a Christian study. These are people in general. They said these people were not only successful, what we also noticed is that not a single one had experienced a divorce. Isn't that fascinating? They said, we don't know why that is. I'll tell you why it is. They were happy in the first place. If you're not happy and you need somebody else to make you happy, you're never going to get happy. You need to be happy. In the first. Besides, marriage isn't about being happy. It's about building a life together. Look, there's days you're happy, there's days you're not. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> Which brings me to the next point. Don't trust your feelings. If you trust your feelings, you are headed for a disaster. Only in marriage are we so incomprehensibly, immeasurably stupid. Because we have listened to people with PhDs, not to knock people with PhDs, but these people are idiots. <laughs> Listen to people with PhDs, you know, these experts on marriage. Yes, I'm an expert. Yes, well, of course, they can't stay married themselves. But yes, I praise God. Yeah, I'm, I'm an expert. I'm very smart. You know. And these morons have been telling us for the last 50 years in this country, uh, in, in a successful uh, marriage, you, you have to be honest with how you feel. You've heard this. Most of you live it. I have to be honest with how I feel. So you got people emotionally vomiting all of each other all the time. Blah, blah. <laughs> Some of the nicest people in the world. Some of you sitting here this morning looking as sweet as pie. Get you home. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> all going crazy. <laughs> well, well, I just have to be honest with how I feel. Yeah, sorry. I got to be honest with how I feel. No, you don't. Good Lord, it is a formula for disaster. No wonder our divorce rates are spiking through the ceiling. Your mama was right. If you don't have something good to say, don't say it. <laughs> Marriage is not a license to be a mean jerk. Listen to me. Some of the sweetest, you know who you are, you little sinners. Some of these are the sweetest <laughs> people on earth. The minute you get home, you get as mean and nasty and whiny and rah! <laughs> because you're married. As if marriage gives you permission to be mean and nasty. It does not. Stop. Be nice. Well, I can't help how I feel. Yes, you can. Shut up. 
Now, I'm not saying you can't discuss issues that come up. There are issues we all need to wrestle with. I get it, but that's different than what I'm talking about. This thinking of, I need to just, I got to tell you how I feel about this. Honestly, I don't want to feel so miserable. My wife and I, that cute redhead over there, we've been married going on 40 years. People say, how have you been married for almost 40 years? Because we're not honest with how we feel. <laughs> What's the matter with people? <laughs> I'm sure there's mornings she wakes up, looks at me, and feels like she's been blessed by God. <laughs> I'm sure there's mornings she looks at me and is convinced she married the spawn of hell. <laughs> A simple good morning would suffice. <laughs> Listen to me. This thing of living by your feelings, you apply this to any area of life, you will fail. And I can virtually guarantee all of y'all, all, all y'all in here. I can virtually predict how successful you are in life based on how much you live by your feelings. People who are successful in school and college never ask themselves, do I feel like studying? You know who does terrible in school? Those of you who say, I don't feel like it. <laughs> I don't want to study, why not? I don't, mom, I, I don't. I don't I don't feel like it. <laughs> Those of you who built successful businesses. See, everybody thinks you're lucky. Oh, you guys were lucky. You're just lucky you had a successful. Oh, yeah, yeah, real luck. You're lucky because you didn't ask yourself if you felt like working 18-hour days for 20 years. The people who didn't do it, I don't... I don't I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. These musicians this morning jamming it up and having, wouldn't you love to play like that? Wouldn't that be great? The reason they do this, because they never ask themselves, do I feel like practicing? You know who never gets here? The kids, when you tell them to practice and they say, I don't feel like it. I mean, who feels like practice? Who feels like going, da 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 Nobody feels like it. They just do it. They don't ask themselves if they feel like it. Any, take any area of life. The ones who succeed are separated by the ones who fail by one simple measure. Do you do what you feel? The minute you live by how you feel, you will fail in that area of life. That's why you parents need to talk to your kids and teach them. They just need to do it. And don't reason with them. Are you crazy? Do this. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't feel like it. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't care what you feel like. Do it anyway. You need to teach your kids. They need to do stuff whether you feel like it or not. I need to reason with them. Oh, well, I don't want them to do what they don't feel. They will fail in life. They will. And it will be on you. <laughs> Seriously, life is tough. It's always been tough. Nobody feels, can you imagine? People tomorrow morning going to work based on how they feel. Calling their boss and saying, listen, boss, listen, I'd, I'd really love to come to work today. I, I really would. But uh, I, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> so, so I'm staying home. You get fired. Can you imagine soldiers on the front line of a battle? And the sergeant yells, charge! And one of the soldiers gets up and says, listen, listen, guys, I'd, I'd love to charge. I, I, I really would. I'm very pro-charging. I have been rehearsing charging with you for a long time now. But in, in all honesty, I, I don't think it would be fair to you if I charged at this time because I, I'm not feeling it. They take a gun out and shoot you in the head. Only in marriage have we bought into such a foolish concept and have done so without question or challenge because someone 
had a degree behind their name when they told us this insanity. This idea that you have to verbalize every emotion popping through your heart and soul is a formula for disaster. Shh. Be nice. You want to make a good choice for life? Listen to your family and friends. If your family and friends are all telling you this is a bad idea, listen to them. Well, I can't. I have to follow my feelings. See, this is what your kids are hearing over and over again. Do you watch these chick flicks? These emotional psycho things? Everybody, the guy is like crazy, psycho, nobody agrees, but yet they've got to be together because I must follow my heart. And they live happily ever after because they never show you what happens after the wedding. Because I promise you, in six months, she's emailing me saying, I'm in hell! <laughs> Here's a real important one. When you're dating, don't get physical with these people. Listen to me, you single people. Do not get physical with them because sex will make you stupid. <laughs> it will. It will make you dumb as a brick. Now, in a way, it's supposed to. <laughs> it's true. You see, sex is the Novocaine that makes marriage possible. <laughs> <laughs> Numb me up, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm feeling pain. I need more Novocaine. It's supposed to numb your brain when you're married. But you do this before you get married, it'll just make you stupid. The one thing you can do that will virtually guarantee you will make the biggest mistake of your life, get physical with it. That's all you got to do. Want to have a failure of a life? Get physical with it. That's all it takes. It's an unmitigated disaster. If we had the time to listen to all the failed stories in this room, people said, oh, I don't know what I was thinking. I was in this horrible relationship. Oh, everybody's got their dramatic stories. Oh, this was horrible. I don't know how what happened. I don't know. Ask them one question. Were you having sex with them before you married them? 98% of the time, the answer will be yes. That is why, my dear, you made such a big mistake. It is a disaster. These things just don't happen by themselves. Say, so, well, we're not actually having sex. What are you, Bill Clinton? <laughs> Stop that. Don't get physical with them. If it involves this general area, it's sex. Knock it off. I wish I had more time. <laughs> Let me end with this. Jesus gave us a parable. He said, unless a grain of wheat falls or is planted in the earth, unless it dies, it will remain alone. But if it will die, it will spring forth new life. Now, the problem is, again, most people don't really read the Bible. They read little pieces of it. They don't actually read it. You need to read it. Read one of the Gospels. It's virtually, and it's not a big read. It's not like, you know, the Star Wars trilogies or something. It's very simple. Okay? It's a very simple read. You can't possibly read one of the Gospels and not walk away with the sense that God wants to kill you. <laughs> not the physical part of you, but the selfish part of you. You know how many times Jesus talked about dying to yourself, picking up your cross, laying down your life? Planted as a seed, waiting to die so new life can come. God wants to kill you, and there is no more perfect institution designed to kill you than marriage. <laughs> because you cannot do it and stay selfish. It's impossible. And listen to me. Marriages only end for one reason. I know you all have these various... No, no, no. There's only one reason your marriage failed or any marriage fails. One or both of you get selfish. That's all there's to it. We as Christians, this whole Christian journey is learning not to be so puking selfish. We need to die to ourselves and live the life of Christ in us. We need to let go and let God in us. 
Jesus said, if you plant the seed, and we're all planted. If you're a Christian, if you're a believer, he, the first thing he does is he plants you in the ground and waits for you to die. You know what people are like who won't die? <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> it's, it's so cold down here. I, I can barely move. <laughs> I got dirt in my mouth. <laughs> And I'm so lonely, and I'm so miserable. What should I do? Die already! <laughs> there is no person more miserable than a Christian who's been planted that refuses to die. You will be incomparably miserable. Let go. Let God in your life. Quit hanging on everything. I want, I, 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 me, 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 me. My precious, my precious, I love my precious, my precious, my precious, I love it. Stop! Let go, let God. You know why this is so important? Because dead people are very easy to get along with. They are, they never get mad. You can ignore them, they don't care. You can poke them with a stick, they never hit you back. They're dead. We need to learn. Look, this is not easy. And this is a lifelong journey. Laying down our life, letting go. If you demand to hang on to everything you want, you'll never succeed as a Christian, and you'll certainly never succeed in a marriage. We've got to learn to let go and let the life of Christ come in us so we can blossom into something more beautiful than you ever imagined or dreamed if you'll just let go and let God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your kindness to us. Thank you for the example of Jesus who laid down his life so we could have life. Lord, help us to let go, let God. Quit hanging on to everything we want. Help us to use wisdom in making these important decisions in life. Help us to do life right. Help us to have the kind of lives that people who don't know you will look at us and say, man, I want to be like you. And this will give us a wonderful opportunity to share your glorious love with them. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Thank you. Let's thank Mark for coming. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. And of course, uh, those keys to successful life pre-marriage certainly all work within marriage. So I'm sure we all took away Something very valuable today, uh, but I want to let you know this is just a teaser. The big deal is coming up on uh, March 2nd and 3rd. Right outside the lobby today, we're going to have a conference. It's Friday night, Saturday morning, and it's our hope that um, you'll be able to show up and really enrich your marriage through this conference. And uh, we'll take sign-ups online as well. This insert is in your bulletin, so make sure you're here March 2nd and 3rd. It's going to be a powerful weekend and a great opportunity to invite friends and neighbors. This material, this biblical message has got to get out to families uh, in our valley, not just for ourselves. So don't be selfish about this. Promote it and make sure your friends and family are there.